الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ladies and gentlemen assalamu alaikum on behalf of the international islamic propagation center i welcome you all to this auspicious gathering a gathering of those who are keen to follow the way of their lord allah the omnipotent ladies and gentlemen on behalf of the islamic international islamic propagation center on your behalf and on my personal behalf i welcome mr ahmed dida to this gathering it is a very happy occasion for us to have him amongst us as our chief guest today to start with our proceedings i shall now request the founder of international islamic propagation center mr mohammad sheikh to come to the rostrum and recite verses from the holy quran mr mohammad sheikh السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياه اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صدق الله العظيم the translation in the name of allah most gracious most merciful praise to be allah the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds most gracious most merciful master of the day of judgment Thee do we worship and thine aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, thou whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Muhammad Sheikh of International Islamic Propagation Center will present a shield on behalf of the center to Mr. Ahmed Dida. On this shield is embossed the insignia of the Shah Faisal Award, which was awarded to Mr. Ahmed Dida.
To tell you very briefly about the International Islamic Propagation Center, it has been established by Mr. Muhammad Sheikh, the gentleman standing on the dais now with the shield in his hand. His center is using advanced media of video cassettes as publicity material for Dawa, that is Islamic propagation, and has now become one of the most popular approaches to reach out into the homes of the population. The center has more than 100 different programs of various Muslim scholars of international repute which will inspire you, teach you, and bring people closer to the truth of Allah, inshallah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, not to stand between you and Mr. Amidi Daat, I request him to come to the rostrum and deliver his lecture. Mr. Ahmad Didat. I would request you, ladies and gentlemen, to rise and give this gentleman a standing ovation. Alhamdulillah <laughs> wahda. Was salatu was salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da. Allahumma ya mufatihu al-abwaab, wa ya musabibu al-asbaab, wa ya dalilu al-ha'ireen, tawakkaltu alayka ya rabbul alameen, wa ufawid amri ila Allah, inna Allah basirun bilibad. A'uzu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, wa innaka la'ala khulukin azim, sadaqallah, sadaqallah al-maran azim. My dear brothers and sisters, the subject of this evening's talk is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest. It's an amazing situation that Allah Bari Ta'ala Himself, He gives this honor to His Messenger in the verse that I recited to you from Surah Al-Qalam, chapter 68 in the Holy Quran, Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ azim." So most certainly, O Muhammad, thou art on the highest pinnacle of behavior. Allah testifies to this. But Muslims, in general, they seem to be suffering from an inferiority complex. The Muslim is afraid to say that Allah Baritala gave us this Nabi, this Rasul, of the highest caliber. He is the greatest among the prophets of God, among the messengers of God. I tell you that the Muslim is suffering from an inferiority complex because the very first time I thought of this subject and I was called to deliver a lecture on the occasion of a Maulud in an adjoining province in my country. They asked me what would be the subject. So I said the subject would be Muhammad وسلم, the greatest. Oh, they were very happy. I arrived at the city and uh, I ask what have they have done, and they show me posters and they show me pamphlets and invitation cards. And on the pamphlet is written, Muhammad the Great. I am asking the organizer, I said, look man, I gave you the title Muhammad the Greatest. He said, that is the printer's error. Printer made the mistake. No, it's possible. You know, always the devil seems to be getting in between the printer and the instructor. What else have you got? So they show me a postcard. Again, I mean the invitation card. Again, Muhammad the Great. I said, look, they made a mistake on the pamphlet. How is it that you couldn't see it on the... Uh, no explanation. No. It's the inferiority complex that they're suffering from. You, will, you dare not say Muhammad the Great. Thinking that when you say Muhammad the Greatest, you are trying to equate him with Allah. Nobody is trying to equate Muhammad Sallallahu Muhammad is his creation, his creature, his servant and his messenger. He can never in any way or anybody in any way can be equated with Allah. 
We are talking about among human beings, among the messengers of God. Among them, he is the greatest. We just had another Muhammad Ali, eh, Muhammad Ali, the greatest visiting the country. Now, he just left, I think, yesterday for back home, the boxer. He is described as the greatest. Greatest in what? In boxing. We have no reason to start fighting and quibbling. He says, now, why is he the greatest? Is he God? Who is talking about God? As a boxer, he was the greatest. As such and such, this guy is the greatest in something else and something else and something else. Nobody is comparing these personalities with Allah. And again, another town, same request, Mr. Didat, are you prepared to come and talk to us? I says, ever ready. In the service of Islam, ever ready. Subject. I said, Muhammad the greatest. So I'm very happy. They're getting free services. When I arrived in the town, the town was painted red with posters all over. Muhammad the Great, Muhammad the Great, Muhammad the Great. That is what has happened to you people. I gave you the title Muhammad the Greatest, and now you're equating my Nabi with Alfred the Great who burned the cake you know, in English history. Alfred the Great. Then Akbar the Great, who tried to bastardize Islam and Hinduism, tried to create a Dina Ilahi. You know, a mixture between to please his Hindu wives. You equating my Nabi with that guy? You equating with Alfred the Great? With Alexander the Great? With them. What's wrong with you people? I say he is the greatest. But I'm happy that the Pakistani young men, they didn't make that mistake. I hope they don't have that inferiority complex. Now, a book has just been written in America. The title of that book is The Hundred, One Hundred, or The Greatest Hundred in History. This book is written by a certain Michael H. Hart, described as an American astronomer, historian, and mathematician. He makes a research on the most influential men in history from the time of Hazrat Adam salam up to current times. And he writes in his research, he analyzes different individuals in history and he gives us a list of his most influential 100. Number one, so and so. Number three, so and so. Number 10, so and so. Number 99, so and so. He gives his reasons why. Why he chose this and why he chose that. Why he rejected so and so. Like Mahatma Gandhi. He's not in the list. But there are people who think that he was a God incarnate, the Hindus of India. So why is it that he was not picked out? So he gives his reason. He said, you see, this man, he might have accelerated the independent movement that India wanted independence was on. He could have accelerated that movement or he could have slowed it down by his appearance. He was not the one who won independence for you. He could have accelerated it or he could have slowed it down. Then his philosophy of Ahimsa. Ahimsa, passive resistance against the British. He said, you see, in the land where this man was born and where he died, Ahimsa is the last thing known to the people of India. They went to war in the past 10 years, how many times? You know, so three times against Pakistan. And they had it out with China. I don't know what they're going to do in Sri Lanka now. Allah knows best. But they are ever on the war path. In the land where he said, no, no strife, no war, no fighting, no killing. They have been killing Muslims by the millions. So as a person of influence, he has no influence in the land of his birth. No influence. So he puts him 114. 14 after the 100, his list is finished. 
He closes it and he gives 14 others and among them he puts him number 14, 114. That means he doesn't come in his list of 100. Now what about his number one? His number one, you'll be happy to learn, he puts our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam number one, Muhammad. It makes us happy that a Christian in America publishes a book of two, some 472 pages, costing sometimes back about $15, must be costing more now, $15. And this man is going out of his way to provoke his people. He is going out of his way to provoke his readers. His readers will be the nominal 200 and some 20 million American Christians and some 6 million Jews. The people who will buy his book are Christians and Jews. And he's telling them that Muhammad is number one and the Lord God of Je the Christians, Americans, Jesus Christ is number three. Amazing, amazing situation. That this man of the opposition that people have been looking down upon he is the most influential man in history and Jesus Christ, his own Lord and Savior, number three. I say account for that. Why would an American in America go out of his way to provoke his customers? Because in the businessmen know that the customer is always right. If you want to do business, you don't provoke your customers. You try and appease them somehow, make them feel that they are in the right and you sell what you want to sell. But this man is actually going against the will and wishes of the Christians and the Jews. Hardly any Pakistani, I don't think, there is a Pakistani here who has that book, The Hundred. You have? MashaAllah. How many? Oh, I didn't know. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm very happy. See so that at least there are a score of people who own, who have the book. So you can still verify. So look, that is not pulling a fast one on you. There are people who know about it. So why does he do that? So some cynics, people, you know, who always have something to say, the last word. He says, you know, the Arabs, they must have bribed this fellow. Look, they're squandering millions on things. One of our dear brother, his wife, she was sailing around the Mediterranean with Rudolf Churchill, the son or the grandson of Winston Churchill in the Mediterranean. And this brother of ours, he was spending $30,000 an hour for his wife to see colored TV on her yacht with her boyfriend, with her lover in the Mediterranean, $30,000 an hour to have it specially beamed onto the yacht or around, you know, the satellites. She could have seen black and white, picked up from Rome or from France somewhere. She can pick up black and white, but that wasn't good enough for her. She must see it in color with her boyfriend, with her lover. And this Muslim brother of ours was spending $30,000 an hour. An hour, $30,000. You just count them in how many rupees, I don't know. So if they can squander money like that, why can't they give Michael, Michael H. Hart say, here's $10,000 for you, say a few good words about my Muhammad. I say it's possible, but not probable, that it will enter the mind of our brethren to do a thing like that. It's possible, but not probable that they could do it. Another of our brother, he goes to the Australian waters to do big fish hunting, what they call blue marlin. Blue marlin is a game fish. If you hook it, it gives you great battle. It takes hours before you can subdue that fish. And it leaps out of the water as if it's flying out of the water. And it goes in again and you pull and you try and it gives you real battle. Blue marlin. So he went to catch blue marlin. One of our brothers. And he didn't catch anything. But when he was finishing off, he gave those people who were helping him to put the bait on the hook, baiting the hook, you know, for him to throw into the water. 
he gave them two thousand dollars each tip 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 two thousand dollars each if our brothers can spend money like that why can't they give say ten thousand to michael h hart or people of the kind say, look man here's ten thousand for you man say a few good words about my muhammad i say again it's possible but not probable when we start in the times magazine july 15 1974 they were a series of essays under the heading who are history's great leaders different people were asked to give their opinions and each according to his light according to his understanding according to his experience he gave his hero some said in that series mahatma gandhi some said confucius some said hitler N not whether good or bad you see when you say great it doesn't mean good or bad great in the sense of moving people doesn't necessarily mean when we say a great earthquake took place in Quetta so many years ago great oh it was 8.4 on the Richter scale we don't say great earthquake it means good earthquake took place it means big tremendous tremendous havoc it took place I think around the 30s in Quetta yes 35 yes. then the great fire of London you know demolish the old London you know I think almost the whole thing was burnt out the great fire or the great plague doesn't mean very good plague and very good fire it means big big so say Hitler somebody say Hitler some said Mussolini and on and on each according to his knowledge about the person among all these contributors philosophers, psychoanalysts, historians, mathematicians, military men. There is one Jules Masterman, described as a United States psychoanalyst. Psychoanalysts, people who analyze people's minds. This man most probably was looking for lunacy in the man people talk about Muhammad Muhammad that there, there are some a thousand million Muslims who believe in this man as somebody really worthwhile following a messenger of God an example a perfect exemplar he said now let me see whether there was any any indication any signs of lunacy in the man this is the job of the psychoanalyst when he sees a genius he is looking for lunacy because they say the difference between a genius and a lunatic is a very thin fringe very little difference you know and just a little off you can be seeming to be very clever but the guy is a lunatic so he's looking for lunacy in the man in our hero but he makes a discovery he says no man this man was the greatest leader of all times and he just doesn't say that the others are just giving their names some said Moses some said Jesus some said Muhammad but this is no 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 before we confer greatness upon any individual we must first find out what we are looking for in the man as I said Muhammad Ali boxing it's a Gary player in my country golfer Glam Muhammad Gama, one of the champion wrestlers of ours in the Punjab, the heavyweight champion of the world. I don't know whether you know that, you know, uh, in his heydays he went to London. And Zibisco was the world champion then in Europe. Our Muhammad, Glam Muhammad Gama floored him in two minutes. And then there were about 30 Japanese wrestlers there in London at the time, some tournament taking place. And Gulam Muhammad Gama, he challenged them all. He says, all 30 of you in one hour. I give you two minutes each. Line up and you come in into the ring. Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. He says, shh. The whole lot just finish you up. <laughs> they didn't take him on. Great, you see. Great wrestler. I would consider, you know, if you look at it in history and if you can analyze all the wrestlers that you know, the heavyweight champions, I say, Gulam Muhammad Gama, number one, the greatest. But that is in wrestling not in boxing so and on and on 
So this man, he says, now before we confer greatness upon any individual, we must first find out what we are looking for in the man. And he says, number one, whoever that person is, number one, he must provide for the welfare of the lead, the people he's leading, he's interested in their welfare. Not in creating milking cows for himself, what I can get out of the people. Like Reverend Jim Jones, in Jonestown, Guyana. Reverend Jim Jones. You see, he had created, we'll wait for the azan, and after the lecture, inshallah, we'll make the salat. We'll just wait for the azan to be over. Shall we? We'll wait. Jim Jones, the azan, reminds me of something. You see, the Encyclopedia Britannica, the 11th edition, they said, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the most successful of all religious personalities. The Azan reminds me of that. Most successful, not that today we are a thousand million. We are, on a historical basis of judging, we are the most uh, fastest growing religion is Islam, and we are also numerically the greatest. Counting of heads, just counting of heads, Christianity, supersedes us. Bodley, Bodley the American, he wrote a book on the life of our Nabi, Yakarim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, titled The Messenger, in which he says that there are more professing Christians in the world than professing Muslims. People who say we are Christians, 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 people who fill up census form as Christian, 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 there are more of that type of people than people who say Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. But, he said, there are more practicing Muslims in the world than practicing Christians. Then Islam started some 600 years after Jesus, 600 years after. And 600 years is a long time, a very long start. They are 1,200 million, we are 1,000 million. Inshallah, you know, within a few decades, we'll, we will overstrip them. Those are only names they say, Christian, 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 but really there's nothing Christian about them. So this is the most successful, and the success is not just the numbers. The message, the Mu'azzin gives five times a day. He said, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. He is not God, he is not his son. Don't make a mistake like the others have done. They made the prophets into gods, they made the heroes into gods. Don't you do that. There's a warning given to Muslims five times a day, every day of the year. And that message has gone home. We have all types of Muslims, all types of lunatic fringes in our midst. But I can't imagine a Muslim saying that Muhammad is God. That's the success, most successful. However, we go back to Reverend Jim Jones. This Reverend Jim Jones had created a cult of Christians. There are thousands of cults, different sects and denominations among the Christians. This man in America, he created his own church. 